Hello. Hey, what's up, guys? Go ahead and flip it. Today we're going to be talking about how we can unlock and use this little orange funny toy device called the Flipper Zero. With this device, you can do a lot of different wireless, wired, uh, NFC, all kinds of different attacks. And today we're going to be diving in and kind of explaining what you can do. And we're going to show off some pretty cool examples. Like we got this garage door opener here. We're going to show how that works. So take it away. I'm Jordan Bush. I work as a uh, government contractor on the civilian side. Uh, on the hacker side, I like to do CTFs, uh, pawn all the devices. This is going to be my third B-Sides talk. Uh, started with uh, wireless tax for my first, did radio sounds for my second. So going through the uh, different avenues here. Lots of fun. And uh, how about you? My name is, oh god, my name is Cosette Mazze. Um, I have been part of the cybersecurity community for about a couple of years now. Um, I originally attended University of Nevada, Reno from 2019 to 2021. I was originally studying electrical engineering and then of course COVID hit and I had to kind of like reevaluate my game plan. So then I transferred to the Metropolitan Community College of Kansas City, Missouri for uh, my associate's degree in cybersecurity. And on one October, or no, on one September night in 2021, I walked into a Sec KC event and that forever changed my life. Um, I did put a list of contributors. So Unleash Firmware, uh, Rogue Master, and of course, Extreme Firmware. Uh, they, you know, redid all the customizable firmware that you probably see on the internet getting blasted with popularity because it's, um, I don't know, how would you explain it? <laughs> A lot of fun stuff. Everyone's making new changes to it, adding their spins on things. So don't try this at home. We're what you call experts. But really, you know, just be courteous of others. Don't try messing with people's presentations. Don't ruin anyone's cars or devices. We're going to be having a live demo today. And I'd ask you guys, just out of courtesy, please don't try to follow us along. I'm almost certain there are plenty of people with flippers here. If you have a flipper, raise your hand. Oh, that's a lot of hands. OK, I was right. So yeah, please don't try to copy me while I'm on stage. We will have a couple demos in the RF Village later today that you can try to pick up on both rolling code and static code. So I think it'll be fun. All right, and uh, like always, we like our audience to understand that this, is, this presentation is only for educational purposes. And if anyone that decides to use these demonstrated here today, uh, you've been warned of potential consequences that can come if it's not performed on your own devices. Before we begin, uh, we would like to kindly ask everyone to turn off your Bluetooth on your phone. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta stay safe. <laughs> and uh, we would also like to encourage every uh, audience member here to not connect to just some random free Wi-Fi network to ask your local village uh, member or organizer uh, how to safely connect to the B-Sides KC free Wi-Fi. So thank you. So we're going to be going over how the flipper works, what the flipper is really, because I'm sure some of you are thinking, what the flip is this? <laughs> we're going to be talking exactly over what the thing can do. And as you see up here, we have a couple different technologies presented. We're going to be talking about each and every one of them. So, oh, did you want this? OK, so what is a flipper zero? A Flipper Zero is this little pocket multi-tool device um, launched around 2020 on Kickstarter. I picked mine up in 2021, started messing with it when they were having issues with shipping. People thought it wouldn't come through because of regulations. I think, what was it, just recently the UK banned it. So if you try to travel through United Kingdom Airport with one of these things, it's getting confiscated. Crazy, I know. Brazil, I believe, banned them too. So they're a little restricted when it comes to trade. I mean, really, we're just doing things with wireless technology. I don't know what's to love. 
but some countries are not too happy with it. Uh, a group of ded dedicated hardware engineers from Russia made this. Maybe that's one reason. Yeah, you know what's going on over there right now. So we're going to show a little video of just things you can do with a flipper. All right, so we obviously saw a little bit of a preview of what the flipper can do. Now let's talk about how it all really comes together. So it is ran with an STM32WB microcontroller. It is an ARM Cortex M4 based MCU, supports Bluetooth low energy, uh, 802.15.4 wireless protocols, and Zigbee. This device incorporates a 433 millihertz antenna designed for transmitted and receiving signals in that frequency. Paired with a CC11101 chip, a cost-effective sub one gigahertz transceiver, it's optimized for extremely low power wireless operations. While it's primarily intended for 433, 868, and 915 millihertz bands within the industrial, scientific, and medical, and SRD, short range distance frequency realms, uh, it is adaptable for use across 300 to 348 millihertz and 387 to 464 millihertz. And, and 779 to 928 millihertz. Um, this makes it suitable for applications like smart sockets, IoT sensors, doorbells, and garage doors, and barriers. This flipper also has a 125 kilohertz antenna at its base with an integrated NFC module operating at 13.6 millihertz paired alongside a 125 kilohertz module, the flipper transforms into an RFID device capable of functioning across both low frequency and high frequency spectrums. 
So, let's just say you bought a flipper today. What do you need to do to get it working? Well, one big thing, you need to get yourself a micro SD card. It goes right in this little slot down here, and without it, you won't really be able to do much because you gotta put all your files somewhere. You're gonna download a lot of pre-made files, whether it be signals and firmware files, custom animations, media. There's a lot of stuff you can do with your flipper, and without any way to store it, you know, the thing only has like a couple megabytes of storage. It's pretty important. What you do after you get your storage taken care of, you're going to get some firmware. You can use the official firmware for the app. You can just download it and connect it over Bluetooth. Or you can dive a little deeper like me and probably a lot of other people. There are forks of the firmware that we mentioned earlier. I'm personally running a firmware called Rogue Master. And with that, I'm able to do more custom waveforms, uh, rolling code attacks. There's a lot of new apps that you can get for it. So if I do anything that you can't find in your own flipper, you might consider getting custom firmware. Uh, if you have any questions on how to do that, you can find me in the RF Village later. And hopefully, I believe, yeah, we'll go from there. <laughs> so. All right, so uh, we're going to get into what it can do, right? Bad USB. It is a critical security flaw that can turn USB devices into an attack platform. It exploits the way that USB is designed and operates, allowing a malicious party to reprogram a USB device's firmware, making it to act in unintended ways. The, flip, the Flipper Zero, uh, with its features, also includes the ability to act as a bad USB, or if you guys know, uh, the rubber ducky. Uh, this means that it can emulate various USB devices types, such as keyboards, and execute uh, predefined keystrokes on a connected computer. Bluetooth uh, is also Bluetooth Low Energy. Uh, this simple protocol enables users to have wireless gadgets connected from one device to another. With the convenience of BLE, you connect your flipper to an app, enabling a flow for updates, app installations, and, you know, so much more. But that's not all. The Flipper Zero is not just a passive observer in the Bluetooth realm, but it actively engages as evidenced by current popular attacks such as the Apple BLE proximity pairing spammer and for a touch of nostalgic mischief, the Rickroll attack via Bluetooth. So, the flipper has a sub gigahertz radio that can be used from uh, practically, you know, the lower tens of megahertz up to a gigahertz. It's got a Texas instrument chip powering all that. Um, with this device, you're able to clone different remote codes and pick up on many other things. Sorry, I'm just looking at the slides. Uh, the device can also do fuzzing attacks where you might be able to clone somebody's remote code that might open, say, I don't know, a locker or something. And it might just put out one code that opens one locker and there's like 20 of them. So you can fuzz that signal and potentially find a way to generate the other locker open combination codes. So with the flipper, you can find and debunk new kinds of attacks. Uh, with infrared, we have a little thing right here, a little black thing on my flipper. I don't know how easy to see in the back, I'm sorry. Uh, but essentially what you're able to do is you can emulate TV remotes, other kinds of remotes that also use the same kind of technology. And one of my favorite things to do is TV be gone. I'm sure some of you have heard of that. Uh, you can integrate that on your flipper and just drive by and turn off all the, TV, all the TVs in a sports bar or something. Uh, don't ask me if I've done it because I'm not gonna tell you, but it's fun if you do it safely. Uh, with RFID, you have the capability of being able to clone different key cards. So maybe you have access cards for your building. You can clone those. Uh, you might have different key fobs that you carry around. You can clone those too. Uh, pretty much any kind of RFID key card except for credit cards and some more specialized cards you can clone. We'll talk about that a little more later. 
All right, so we're going to talk about near field communications, or NFC, I should say. So functions that quite dialogues between two devices placed just a few centimeters away. Uh, how many of you guys use the wireless touch pay on your phone? Yeah. All of us do, okay. <laughs> um, NSC tags, which often store personal details, can be accessed by unauthorized devices. Devices like the Flipper Zero can potentially retrieve this um, stored information. Um, and the Flipper Zero can emulate NFC tags, allowing it to mirror or adopt right, the identity of any tag for both experimentation and potential security exploitations including malicious cloning of access cards or secure NFC tags. Um, one of the most popular attacks that's been kind of happening with NFC is, uh, how many of us own a Nintendo Switch at home? How many of us, yeah. Uh, do you guys know what Amiibo is? It's like you use the, yeah, so at the bottom of the box at the Amiibo, you just need to use your Flipper Zero to scan the bottom of it and it'll capture the NFC tag and then you can take it home with you without you know, buying the whole device and uh, emulate it on your Nintendo Switch. Um, I do not encourage this, but it is a, a current popular vulnerability at the moment. Um, and yes, if you accidentally open up your contactless pay on your iPhone or on your Android, the flipper can pick it up from there. So you've been warned. You wouldn't download an Amiibo, would you? <laughs> Although I do have a side note, I can't take my flipper and just walk through a crowd and steal people's credit cards. Don't be concerned about that. If you want to actually steal, you're going to need something pretty large. You're going to need more power coming out of a near field communication antenna. So a little flipper like this, it doesn't have enough power to steal people's credit card data. So don't worry about that if you're around me or any one of you that raised your hand earlier, I think everyone should be okay. All right, back to where we were. GPIO, general purpose input output as it's known. It's uh, essentially a set of pins on pretty much every microcontroller that exists. The flipper gives you a good amount of pins. There's a lot of expansion cards you can buy that utilize these pins. Um, you can write your own programs to do kinds of attacks that use different custom hardware. Uh, for example, one of the big ones is hooking up a Wi-Fi card to do Wi-Fi based attacks or hooking up a different kind of uh, RF chip to try to steal people's uh, keyboard credentials by sniffing keyboards over the air. A lot of different attacks for that. So I like to think of it as an expansion module. So we have a Wi-Fi card that runs on the expressive ESP32 platform. If you look on your badge, you actually have one right here. They make those into a module. You probably could wire your flipper up directly to that if you wanted, not suggesting it. But what you can do with the flipper is various Wi-Fi attacks that have came out over the years, essentially taking features from like the Wi-Fi pine pineapple, for example. Um, now, I could be wrong about this, but I don't believe you can crack Wi-Fi with a flipper. So... If you're looking for that, just for that reason, there's better hardware. All right, so I kind of wanted to show a little introduction on the Wi-Fi wizardry with the Flipper Zero. Um, through the Marauder, which is a firmware you have to install into the ESP32, we can capture packets on the Wi-Fi network and analyze them later. In addition, the evil portal capabilities like replicating various logins can um, let users gain access like usernames and passwords, uh, perform SSID deauthentication attacks, and interacting with other devices on the network. Um, these are only a few examples, and these are just a few ways to get started. Uh, one of the ways I prefer to kind of get started would be to use the, um, the easy, the Flipper Zero Easy Marauder Flash. Um, I know like this kind of sounds like hard, like, oh, you got to flash like an ESP32. Well, it's a great way to get into firmware hacking and understanding how chips function. We will be demonstrating to flash an ESP32 with the uh, Flipper Zero Easy Marauder Flash. This is a great project to get started if you haven't, a great hands-on experience with understanding that a chip needs firmware. 
which is ideally a set of protocols for it to work. And um, just a heads up, please make sure you have the latest version of Python, um, because this will come in handy later. So back on the topic of protocols, we have one that runs out of the GPIO port called UART, Universal Asynchronous Receive Transmit. If you look on your badge, there's a couple UART pins. Now, with these, this is more of an example that UART is in everything, and it is everywhere. Your router probably has it. Your smart devices, everything you own, it probably has it. Now, for the purpose of the badge, we can use it to program them. That's how we, up, that's how we can upload our firmware. Now, with this badge specifically in this context, you have a USB port, so it'd be easier just to do that instead of trying to hook up your flipper. But I will say, if you don't have a USB serial adapter with you whenever you need it, your flipper can function as it. Just plug in USB and plug in the couple pins in the top, and you're able to do it. It does have convenient features like that. SPI chip uh, flash reading is another one. You can plug in just a couple of SPI uh, flash leads into it, hook up a uh, in-ship programmer, and with that, you're able to read, write, extract, whatever you need to do to flash, and again, saving yourself on hardware you need to put in your backpack. Back to RF. That's my car. I'm a little mischievous. I don't do that to just my car. There's a vulnerability in Tesla's that has been known for a couple of years now. Uh, there's a simple replay attack where you can take the supercharger's open port command and open pretty much any Tesla port. The official Tesla ones just use a very low, like, low power signal, but the flipper actually puts out more power and it will uh, open any charge port on a Tesla in like a 25 foot radius. Please don't go to the Tesla uh, store and just do that to all of them. I really don't want you to ruin it. Oh, train must be coming through. Garage doors, okay. You might see what I have here. I have a garage door opener. I'm gonna show you how we can crack into this garage door. This garage door was a Craftsman that I had in my, old, my home. I took it out, replaced it with a newer one. It's got rolling code security, security plus 1.0. Uh, the flipper can crack security plus both 1.0 and 2.0, which is currently being used in modern garage doors, including the one I just bought to replace this one. I'm sad. That's not the point. But we have the remote right here. If I were to hit it, I don't know how easy that is to hear, but it's running right now. I'm gonna turn it back off. But with the flipper, I can actually come onto the screen and essentially capture the code and control it from my flipper. Uh, originally, we had plans to actually have a camera up here and show how that works, but due to complications with HDMI cables, that didn't happen today. If you wanna see this again, come to the RF Village and I'll show you just up close and personal. But essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the sub gigahertz menu. And if you want to follow along, if you're watching this on YouTube or something later, I'll try to explain the best I can. So if you go to the sub gigahertz menu, and you'll go to frequency analyzer. Now with the frequency analyzer feature, it will show you what megahertz is being picked up. Right now, looks like I'm picking up some 307 megahertz signal. That could be the microphone, actually. <laughs> so what I can do with the garage door opener remote is I can press the button on it and I receive the signal. It says free 10 megahertz. So I'm gonna press that again just to turn it back. And what I can do on my flipper is if I go into read on the sub gigahertz menu, I guess go ahead and pull your flippers out if you wanna see this, just please don't transmit. That's all I ask. If you go to read, you set the frequency to the frequency that it specifies. It's now scanning, and I don't know how easy it is to see, but there's a little blinking light in the status LED. If I take my garage door, uh, let's see, settings, settings, settings. If I take my garage door, I can actually read it out. 
and we'll see if we can pick up the little beep the flipper makes. So I just picked up my rolling code. I don't know if you heard that beep or not. So on the screen, it says security plus, and it's got the key ID and serial number of this wireless key. I have a send button, so I can replay that rolling code. It's going to generate the next rolling code in series, and what I can come over here and do is just replay that code directly to the garage door and open it up. It's very likely you can do this to your own garage door, but please, please, don't go steal your neighbor's stuff out of their garage just because you learned what you could do with one of these things. There's a lot of vulnerable garage doors. How about hotel cards? How many of y'all have been to a hotel? I'm almost certain everyone. So, many hotels have NFC tap cards now for their doors. And just like anything, they can be hacked. I mean, the DEF CON hotel this year was hackable. I had a clone of my DEF, Cal or DEF CON hotel room. We had a party room that we had a little key for. If you'd like to go ahead and go on. So, when you got your hotel key card, essentially what you have to do is grab the serial number off the card. You take your flipper, you tap it against the hotel key card, and it gives you the serial number of it. So you can see screens kind of haunt me. It doesn't really show up too well, but the serial number of the hotel key card is on there. Next slide. So what you do with that information is you'll come over to the hotel door and you'll actually pick up some uh, responses that the door sends out that involve decrypting the signal. And what you do with that is you can essentially grab the key off the door. You have to tap the door about 10 times before this works. Make sure that you're the only one in the hotel room hall because if, you see, if you're seen with a little orange or white or black device, whatever color your flipper is, just tapping a hotel card door, people are gonna think you're being a criminal. So please be careful. What you can do with that is you can essentially derive a key that you can use to crack the key card. So there's an app on the flipper, there's also an app on the phone. Both do about the same thing, it's just the flipper has a weaker processor, so using the phone is instantaneous to get the keys from the uh, door reader. The flipper itself takes about 30 seconds, roughly, I timed it. Uh, with that, you go back over, you tap it to the card, and it's gonna brute force every single key it has in its dictionary. Turns out a lot of these key cards don't lock out or erase the data, which is great for us. And this process takes roughly 20 to 30 minutes, depending on how many keys you have. You might have downloaded a large preset key directory, which I recommend, dictionary. Um, and when that's done, you'll have a copy of your key card. Now, what you can do is you can tap it to a clone. Now, you can also just use your flipper. However, there's a small problem with a lot of hotel card reader doors. A lot of them have protections against people using their phones to clone hotel key cards, because when they first came out, this was kind of a problem. They didn't know how to solve that. So what a lot of hotel card readers have is they've lowered their frequency that they read the cards on. It's just low enough that the cards themselves still work, but it prevents normal NFC antennas that broadcast at the correct frequency from running. So sometimes you have to go the extra mile and clone it to a physical key. Uh, these physical keys cost about five bucks on Amazon. They're not really hard to procure. Um, I'm almost certain there's somebody else with one of these here right now. So I took my key and you saw that little blue key card I had. I essentially went up to a door and opened it. Take a look at this. I've cloned my hotel key card onto this little tag. Let's go try it. It's that easy. Because, uh, what are you doing? We got to get out of here. We've already shown them what this thing can do. 
It's only time that companies come after us, the three-letter agencies. There's no way. None of these attacks are zero days. You're really not doing anything too creative. I mean, for example, humans have been doing replay attacks for centuries. Have you ever heard of this thing called a turkey call? That's a replay attack. So don't be concerned that you're going to break laws because you're using some known vulnerability. You, you can't hack all the things with one button. So what you're saying is we're safe? We're not going to be put on a watch list? Eh, maybe, but, you know, maybe we'll be put on somebody's playlist of, you know, videos to watch later. We'll see. Well, Jordan's right. I mean, a lot of these things have been around for, well, you know, a decade or so, centuries. Um, we see that one of the oldest is the 2004 hacking the proxy card, so your, you know, your work badges and everything. That's been a vulnerability for some time. Uh, relay attacks have been a problem since 2010, and low Bluetooth energy secu uh, low security with Bluetooth uh, has been out since 2013. Um, the flipper has not exploited anything new. And maybe it's time that we stop blaming users for lack of security. So look, there's a bunch of devices that came out before the flipper that we essentially put into the flipper. Garage doors, there's open sesame. That was uh, back when garage doors before like the uh, mid 90s started using rolling code. They just had static codes with dip switches and we were able to brute force those things in seconds. That exists. You can do it with the Flipper 2. The SDRs have been around forever. I did a talk on SDRs in 2021. So replay attacks have existed well before I did any of that and before this Flipper came out. Uh, the prox cards, again, because I just talked about that. A lot of stuff we just talked about is on this slide. So Flipper just unites all these things together into one small package you can carry around with you in your backpack, your pocket, wherever. And that's how it all works. Hack the planet. <laughs>